So I did a video a few weeks back talking about the top 10 shows to binge watch on Netflix right now um, and it was really popular. You guys really enjoyed the video. I will link it down below. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch that one. Uh, but a lot of people have been asking what I've been watching on Amazon Prime and on Apple TV as well. I actually do have both of those uh, packages at the moment, so I'm using both. So I thought, yeah, okay, I'll do another follow-up video. So this video is me talking about 10 shows from Amazon Prime and Apple TV combined that I have been binge watching over the last 12 months and that you should check out. We've only got a little bit of lockdown left now. 21st of June, life in the UK is due to go back to normal. So until then, we need to pack in as many of these shows as we can. And there's some classics in here, some good new shows, but some golden oldies as well. So here we go. This is my top 10 shows to watch on Apple TV and Amazon Prime. Now I start off with a show that I haven't actually seen all the way through yet, but I am really enjoying. It was recommended to us by quite a few friends and we put it off for a little while, but then we decided we'd give it a go. And I'm really glad that we did. And the show is called This Is Us. Now, this is not a program that you will watch with dry eyes. You will cry. It is an emotional drama talking about a family over the course of around 30, 40 years, starting off with when their parents, Jack and Rebecca Pearson, meet in the 1970s, I believe, or it might even be the 1960s. Um, they meet and they fall in love and their story is told from the modern day perspective and we look at flashbacks of their life growing up with their kids and all of that. It's a really good show. I can't really sell it to you very well, I don't think, but just trust me on this one. It's an emotional show. It will tug at your heartstrings. It will remind you of the um, almost the flaws in your own family, but also the lovable side as well. And uh, it's a really, really good watch. So I would highly recommend This Is Us. Another one along the same sort of lines to This Is Us, but from more of a comedy element, is Modern Family. This one actually appeared on my Netflix list as well. It is on Amazon Prime and on Netflix. So if you've got either of those platforms, you could be able to check this one out as well. Um, but yeah, Modern Family, really, really good, really funny. It's the story, or it's, it's, it's a bit like Friends meets New Girl kind of vibes. It's set in California, LA, I believe. I don't know if it's actually in LA. It's nondescript part of like California area. And um, yeah, it follows a family, three households, same family. They're all kind of modern in the way that they are made up as a family. And it's just a really funny show. We've got back into it recently, actually. And uh, it is available on Amazon Prime. So if you haven't seen Modern Family and you're looking for something to just make you laugh, easy watching, you can stick an episode on and uh, you know, you don't need to know the sort of backstory. It's very easy to pick up. And uh, yeah, highly recommend Modern Family. Now this one, when I wrote it down on my list that I've got just off camera, I actually wrote down Top Gear. It's not Top Gear. Top Gear is what they used to be on, uh, but I'm of course talking about the Grand Tour, which is also available on Amazon Prime. When Amazon Prime actually launched, the Grand Tour was one of their sort of flagship new shows featuring uh, the trio from the original BBC Top Gear, which I loved. Uh, I used to watch this all the time uh, on BBC Two with uh, Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond and James May uh, doing all of their car, loosely related to car adventures all across the world that they used to do. And um, they now still do that show, uh, but they do it on Amazon Prime and it's called The Grand Tour. And it is really good, particularly their road trip episodes that they do. Uh, they did one over Christmas uh, that was really, really good. And they've done tons of them. They go all over the world and do these silly sort of challenges. And uh, like I say, it's re loosely related to cars, but really it's just guys driving around the world, kind of exploring and having a laugh. And I really enjoy it. I find them really, really funny. Um, but obviously they don't do it on the BBC anymore because Jeremy Clarkson punched one of the producers in the face. So now they're doing it on Amazon Prime, but it's still just as good. It's the same capers as it used to be on the old show. So if you enjoyed the original Top Gear, I highly recommend to you the Grand Tour. Amazon Prime also have a um, load of series that they made around the area of sport and they call the shows All or Nothing. Uh, there's two series of this that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, both of them football related. As you know, I'm a big football fan. I'm a Manchester United fan, so it hurts for me to put All or Nothing Manchester City on this list because Manchester City are our great rivals. Well, they're not really our great rivals. We're their great rivals, but our great rivals are Liverpool probably. But that's another story. Amazon Prime have all or nothing Manchester City, which is a really good look 
at one of the most successful football teams uh, in recent times. Manchester City, a couple of years back, well they're, they're amazing again now, but the show was filmed I believe in 2019, so two years ago, and it follows Pep Guardiola who is a genius, an absolute managerial genius. Again, I hate to say it, but he is. And it follows him and his team as they went on to have a very successful season. Um, and watching them behind the scenes, you know, you've got all the behind the scenes camera access. It's an incredible watch. So if you want to watch something related to football, I recommend All or Nothing at Manchester City. There is a new series of that called All or Nothing Tottenham Hotspur, which is actually better, I think. Uh, it focuses on Tottenham Hotspur, also known as Spurs, um, who again are a very successful team out of London in uh, the Premier League. And their manager is somebody who transcends culture, popular culture, Jose Mourinho, who everybody knows. He's a, a box office name in football. Everybody knows who he is. He's always got something witty to say um, and he's won it all. You know, he's a very successful football manager. And uh, All or Nothing Tottenham Hotspur has him coming into the club when they start filming. So you can imagine there's a lot of behind the scenes drama and the access they have on these shows. Uh, to the actual football teams, the players, the management, the coaches. Particularly enjoyed the scene, by the way, when uh, Danny Rose goes into uh, Jose Mourinho's office and confronts him and asks him why he's not playing very often. You know, these are the sort of conversations where, as football fans, we've always wondered, oh, I wonder how that conversation goes. You know, we've never been allowed in. But now, with this documentary, we're allowed in and we get to see all the stuff that we've always wanted to see from behind the scenes. All or Nothing Tottenham Hotspur. I really recommend it to you. And you don't have to be a football fan to enjoy it. I watched it with Jo, my wife, who's not a massive football fan, but she enjoyed it. You know, we watched it together. It was a little bit, you know, a bit of drama in there as well, but obviously the football element does come into it, but it was a really interesting documentary. So get on that one as well. I also want to recommend a show that I have only seen the first episode of. I enjoyed that first episode a lot. I've just never got back to it. Um, and I really like the premise of the show. The show is called The Man in the High Castle. It's on Amazon Prime. It's been going for quite a long time. Again, I think this one started roughly when Amazon Prime was formed uh, a number of years ago. So it's a bit of a longer running show. But the premise of the show is that the Nazis and the Japanese won the war and they divided America into two, half German, half Japanese. What would that look like? That's the premise of the show. Uh, but there's a few twists and turns, even just in the first episode, and it looks like things are not all as they seem. I have nothing more to say to you than that because I haven't seen any more than that. But from what I have seen, I think it's got the makings of a really good show. So I am going to get back on that one at some point, and I recommend you do as well. And if you get there before I do, let me know. Is it good? Is it worth me continuing? Man in the High Castle. The next one is a blast from the past, but when it came out, everybody obsessed over it. Everyone loved it. It was all anyone talked about. I'm of course talking about Lost. <laughs> Do you remember Lost when it came out? I think it was 2004, something like that. Uh, Lost is the premise of the show. Let's see if we can sum it up uh, in a sentence. A plane crashes on a desert island and everybody on the plane has their own backstory that we then come on to hear through flashbacks to their life in the real world, but then we realise things to do with the island where they've crashed and not all as they seem, and um, there's a uh, there's a polar bear, there's a zoo, there's there's lots of things that happen that are just crazy. Like it's a crazy show. It's one of those shows where every episode something happens and you're thinking. What? <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense. And then they, the ending lets Lost down. I'm not, do you know what? This is a separate video, isn't it? Talking about Lost. But the fact that so many people saw it, the fact that it got so many people hooked, and I was one of them, you know, I bought, I had all the DVDs, I watched it all. It's a good show, it keeps you guessing. Uh, but the problem is, it doesn't always answer those questions that you have, you know? It's one of those. So give it a go if you're looking for something a little different. But I really enjoyed it lost. And by the end you will be completely lost. And the last one I've got for Amazon Prime is The Night Manager. This was a BBC show uh, based off of a John Le Carre book. Uh, it stars Tom Huddleston, it stars, uh, what's his name, Hugh Laurie from House. Uh, who that's what he's best known for, the show House, which is also on Amazon Prime, I believe. And um, the night manager is about, um, Hugh Laurie's character is a arms dealer and Tom Huddleston's character comes in and tries to uh, get him, 
you know, to answer for his crimes, so to speak. It's a very good book. It's like a sort of spy sort of type show. Oh, Olivia Coleman's also in it. She is fantastic in this. And um, we obviously know Olivia Coleman. She was in uh, The Favourite. She was in The Crown. She's done lots of really good Oscar worthy stuff. Um, but her in The Night Manager, she was really good in that as well. Highly recommend it if you like your sort of action spy sort of shows. Really, really, really good watch. And it's not very long. I think there's one series and I think it's like seven episodes or something. But really worth a watch and it is available on Amazon Prime. So get on that one, The Night Manager. To finish off my list, I've got two shows that were on Apple TV. Um, we've got Apple TV for a little while. It actually came with my phone upgrade. I got a year's subscription to Apple TV. Uh, so we've been using that a little bit here and there. And there's two shows on there that I absolutely loved. The first one being something that I've been waiting for for oh, 10, 11, 12 years, something like that. Um, and that is the show The Long Way Up. It's a documentary series uh, and it's the sequel to the previous shows which were called The Long Way Down and The Long Way Round. Premise of the show, Ewan McGregor, the famous actor, goes around the world with his friend Charlie Borman, who's an uh, actor as well and a motorcycle enthusiast, they both are, and the idea is they go on these epic road trips around the world. Long Way Round was the first series when they drove from, uh, it was from London, round the world east. So they drove around to New York um, and that was called The Long Way Round. Then they did a second series three years later in, I think it was 2007, where they drove from John O'Groats in Scotland down to Cape Town in South Africa. And the most recent series, which I've been waiting for for so long, I was thinking it was so cool if they do one more. And that was called The Long Way Up, where they drove from uh, the southernmost tip of Argentina right up to Los Angeles. So it's a road trip show. Every episode, you know, they, they come into different problems. They go around the world on these motorbikes that they have. And the new series, they do it on electric motorbikes. And it's, it's epic. It's really good. You, you know, the people they meet, the adventures they go on, the scrapes they have. It's fantastic. And I really enjoyed watching it. You know, if you're into your sort of adventure documentaries, this is a must. I think you'll really enjoy this one. And last but not least on my list is The Morning Show. Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, um, Steve Carell. It's got a fantastic cast. Um, and the, the premise of the show is that they are um, people who work in a newsroom. So it's based around an American newsroom, a bit like we would have Good Morning Britain here in the UK with Piers and Susanna. You know, it's those are the lead characters and we follow them as the studio that they work in comes up against a difficult time. And it's about how those three characters particularly navigate the circumstances in which they find themselves. It's a show about um, doing the right thing. It's a fantastic drama, really well acted, really well cast, and a fantastic setting as well. New York, it's set in New York, my favorite place in the world, my favorite city. So I really enjoyed this one. And season two is, I believe, on the way this year. Season one is on um, Apple TV right now. So that is one that I would really recommend to you. Me and Joe binged that one in a couple of weeks and absolutely loved it. Easily one of the best shows on this list. So if you're gonna, yeah, check out any of these and you've got Apple TV, I would say give The Morning Show a go. I think you'll enjoy it. <sighs> I can breathe again now. That's my list. It's all out there. Those are the shows on Amazon Prime and Apple TV that I would commend to you. Some really good watches in there. And like I say, with the world the way it is at the moment, we've only got a little bit longer left of this sort of excuse to watch loads of TV. So give those a go and let me know down below in the comments if there's any I've missed, and also how you found the ones that I recommended. Hope you enjoyed. Hope that was helpful.